everyone. How are you guys doing? So glad you've joined me today. I just took a look at my uh, number of subscribers and I think I am just nine short of reaching my 1,000 subscribers, you guys. I'm super excited about that. I've been on YouTube since May 1st of last year, so just over a year. So that's pretty exciting stuff really exciting. So if you haven't already, press that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. And uh, I'd love to have you come along on this journey with me. Um, today is just going to be a little bit of this and that, as usual on my channel, right? <laughs> but uh, I'm going to jump on my Weight Watchers Zoom meeting in a little bit here. So I'm excited about that. I um, am hoping to see two of my Weight Watcher buddies jump on there as well that I have not seen in a couple months since we were last meeting in person. So hopefully it won't be too much longer before we can do that. Maybe next month, I don't know, but at least through the end of May, um, we're doing it electronically online. So there's that. Um, what else is going on around here? Well, I am super excited to report that, um, you know, I have my Fitbit and I have been really increasing my steps, you guys. In fact, so much so that Sunday I almost reached 10,000 steps, which that is huge. Okay. Because during this whole pandemic, I told you guys about my whole energy, um, deficiency here. Um, but think, I am feeling better. I am. And I think it was stress. I do. I have been really disconnecting from the news, pretty much. I do read some news online, but uh, I'm not as glued to it, <laughs> I think. I think because, you know, the imminent threat is passing, you know, um, it's easing anyway. So, yep, less news, less social media more just focusing on, you know, the goals that I have. And so I think it is definitely making a difference and showing up in terms of my energy level. Um, I just haven't, haven't had those periods of low, low energy like that ever. Um, so it was kind of strange, but I'm glad to be feeling better so I can get out there. And, um, like I said, in last week's video that my ideal goal would be to walk in the morning and evening. Um, that has happened a couple days, but usually it's once a day, but you know, I'll take it, right? So hubby and I have been walking most every evening. So the last three days, um, I have definitely done over 7,000 steps. So that is exciting, exciting. In fact, I used to have um, 6,500 steps as my daily goal. So I decided to bump it up just a little bit to 7,000. So the last three days I have met my goal. So I have a little star on the Fitbit app saying, showing that, you know, I've reached my goal. So that's pretty neat. And uh, it's really interesting how the Fitbit app talks <laughs> electronically with my Weight Watchers app so it can track my activity. So that's nice. It's nice to be, you know, um, to show the, <laughs> what I'm actually doing, <laughs> the accountability and the tracking. It, it's good. So yeah, I definitely feel better. Um, the scale is moving in a better direction because it was up there. It was not good, but I'll be sharing all of that with you tomorrow <laughs> in the Weight Watcher or Wednesday weigh-in video. Um, I'll share all my trials and tribulations of my 103-pound weight loss journey. But I wanted to share with you, <clears throat> I'm reading, I was just kind of browsing through this book. I was looking on my um, my bookshelf in the living room, in my personal library. It's not as large as it used to be. Um, I have gotten rid of some of um, our books, but I'm wanting to build up again. So looking forward to going to the Goodwill bookstore. Most of their hardbacks are $2.99 and you cannot beat that. And they do have a lot of newer titles too. And they really have quite a variety of uh, genres. So I, I love it. But this book is called Safe in the Shepherd's Arms by Max Licato. And um, it's just a little... Uh, like one of those little gift books, but it's a great little devotional. I just want to share uh, a short excerpt um, from the book with you. I thought it might be encouraging because it sure was to me this morning. So 
It says, uh, he leads me beside the still waters, David declares. And in case we miss the point, he repeats the phrase in the next verse. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. He leads me. God isn't behind me yelling, go. He is ahead of me bidding, come. I love that. He is in the front, clearing the path, cutting the brush, showing the way. Just before the curve, he says, turn here. Prior to the rise, he motions, step up here. St standing next to the rocks, he warns, watch your step. He leads us. He tells us what we need to know when we need to know it. As a New Testament writer would affirm, we will find grace to help when we need it. Hebrews 4, 16. God leads us. God will do the right thing at the right time. And what a difference that makes. God is leading you. Leave tomorrow's problems until tomorrow. Isn't that the truth? Give us this day our daily bread. That should be our prayer. Focus on today, right? <laughs> oh, if we could just learn that. <laughs> I'm preaching to the choir here. God isn't going to let you see the distant scene. So you might as well quit looking for it. He promises a lamp unto our feet, not a crystal ball into the future. Psalm 119, 105. We do not need to know what will happen tomorrow. We only need to know he leads us and we will find grace to help us when we need it. Hebrews 4, 16. Yes. We need to hear that God is still in control. I need to read that again. We need to hear that God is still in control. He has not left his throne. We need to hear that it's not over until he says it's over. We need to hear that life's mishaps and tragedies are not a reason to bail out. They are simply a reason to sit tight. Corey Ten Boom used to say, when the train goes through a tunnel and the world gets dark, do you jump out? Of course not. You sit still and trust the engineer to get you through. I love that analogy. That is so good. When the train goes through a tunnel and the world gets dark, do you jump out? Of course not. You sit still and trust the engineer to get you through. That was worth repeating. <laughs> Next time you're disappointed, don't panic. Don't jump out. Don't give up. Just be patient and let God remind you that he is still in control. It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> I just love that. And th this is a really nice little book. Um, it's Hope and Encouragement from Psalm 23. So I thought you might, might uh, enjoy that like I did this morning. Um, it's always good just to kind of refocus and, um, you know, get our encouragement from the Word of God. This is my, uh, my Bible. This is my roadmap for life. Um, I, I love this. This is a nice uh, study Bible. I've talked about it before. It's the Life Application Study Bible, and it's the New Living Translation, which I really like by Tyndall. Um, it is heavy because it has a lot of the helps, a lot of the study guides in it. But that is what I do in the morning as I'm sipping my coffee, which I have already had my cup of coffee this morning. Um, I have not had breakfast yet, so that's probably my next step. <laughs> um, but I got dressed and I did my hair. I feel like a Chia pet, you guys. I need to go to the hairdresser. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to them being open. Uh, Florida has reopened, as you may have heard if you are in a different state. Um, they opened the beaches and the parks as of yesterday, so that's a good thing. I, I, Hubby and I need to go for sunset. I keep saying that, but we're going to have to plan that around his schedule. But I definitely want to go soon. There's something so relaxing about the beach. It's just uh they say you know it's vitamin c s e a <laughs> but it is good for the soul good for the soul but uh yeah so they haven't opened my hair salon yet i've been texting with my hairdresser telling her how much i have missed her <laughs> 
And she misses being in business, I am quite sure, because obviously she's making no money right now. Um, thankfully, her husband works. I think he's a mechanic or something. Um, so hopefully he's gainfully employed right now. But um, yeah, so looking forward to everything reopening very soon. Um, thankfully, everyone in my family, kids and um, my daughter-in-law, everyone is still uh, working and none of my family have lost their jobs. So that is a blessing. That is a blessing. But I do pray for all those who have because this it's a really tough time. But we will get through it. We will get through it. God has not fallen off the throne. He doesn't have a headache. He hasn't somehow lost control of this spiraling world. He sits high and looks low. And I love that, that he controls all things when everything else is out of our control. He is in control. So yeah, so I'm getting ready to go. Probably have some oatmeal and my banana. <laughs> I think I'll throw in some of my fresh blueberries in my oatmeal too, to uh, get in a little more fruit. And um, yeah, tomorrow's weigh-in, you guys. <laughs> no promises here as to the results. <laughs> it's just reality right now. But we'll see. We'll see. But I'll check in with you later. I had to run an errand, uh, drop some letters off at the post office, so I thought I'd chat for a second. I had a good Weight Watchers Zoom meeting today. It was great to see everybody and uh, chat about our struggles and our victories and our goals and all that good stuff. So, yep, that was good. And um, it is hot here today, guys. It is very hot. It is 86 stinking degrees. <laughs> Is. I am thankful for the sun, I have to say, because on our gloomy days, um, you know, it, it's tough mood-wise, but it's it's difficult to have a bad mood when the sun is shining. What do you think? <laughs> I think so. So, it, I am thankful. But the heat, mm, I'm very thankful for the AC, I have to say. So I was thinking, hey, you guys, Sunday is Mother's Day. Wanted to wish a happy, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Um, as you may know from hearing me say, we have three beautiful children who are now uh, adults. <laughs> but uh, excited to see them on Sunday. We're having a cookout. Uh, my husband will grill some burgers and chicken and I'm going to do a big veggie tray. My younger son is going to do his famous deviled eggs. My daughter, I think she's gonna do a Mexican casserole, yum. And I'm not sure what my older son and his wife might bring, but a side of some sort. So, and I think I'm going to do some corn on the cob in the Instant Pot. So some fresh farm sweet corn on the cob. It, it was so good. So I'm going to stock up on some of that. So yeah, excited to see everybody. I have not seen my older son and his wife for two, two and a half months, something like that. So um, it's been a while. So we're going to have a nice a time out on the pool deck. Um, I'm sure it'll be very warm, <laughs> but we'll have the fans going. Um, but it'll be great to see everybody. You know what? Um, I say sometimes that we have the plagues, seven plagues here in Florida. I just realized, of course, I've been inside a lot, but I just realized the love bugs are back, you guys. <laughs> the love bugs. Oh, if you don't know what that is, they are a menace to society. <laughs> they are a menace to Floridians. They are like two lightning bugs uh, stuck together. And then when you drive, they get plastered all on the front of your car and they are really hard to get off, very hard, like no other. <laughs> Some people use dryer sheets, um, but it's better if you can kind of be proactive about it and kind of put like a, a good car wash and a wax on the front of your car and really get them before that gets bad because, oh boy. Yeah, they don't bite or anything. They're really harmless except to your vehicle. <laughs> and they they can swarm and they they're like everywhere. 
Um, they're not horrible right now because they're just starting up. But I noticed that as I was driving, I was like, what? The love bugs are back. <laughs> I missed this. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, we've got the, the lizards, the gators. Um, you know, we've got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We've got the frogs, you know, sometimes it's frog season. And if you're by the lake, you can hear them. <laughs> you know, we've got the locusts and we, we've got a myriad. I mean, with the, our warm temperatures, you know, these things have a long lifespan. <laughs> we've got the mosquitoes. Who can forget the mosquitoes that come out in the evenings? Oh, wow. Yeah, we, we've got it all here, folks. Something for everybody. <laughs> But I am going to go home and have some lunch because I am hungry. I am hungry. It's it's 1 o'clock. Yeah. Um, I think I will have a Greek salad. And we have some leftover chicken. So I think I will put some chicken in there and a hard-boiled egg. Just make it a nice big salad. That sounds appealing right now. The aide is there with my dad. And she will be there for four hours today. So they will go on a walk and um, have some, uh, you know, chatty time. <laughs> so it's always a good thing. So I'll check in with you in a little bit. I decided the other day to go ahead and make a curtain panel for the laundry room door because you may remember my little mini Amazon haul. I ordered a uh, curtain tie-up panel, but that wound up being so huge I had to return it. So I cut out a um, long piece, a uh, tie, but <laughs> funny story about that. It wound up, it, I, I made it so nice and tidy. Look at this, This is that's the underside. Very nice with one seam down the middle. It was going to be so good until it wasn't. You know, it's, it was gonna have two ties, one on that side and then one on this side. But I made it too short. Too short. I don't know what went wrong with my calculation, but you know what? I uh, I just gave up on that because first of all, I didn't have enough fabric left over. I just had a few, a little bit there. So I was looking up videos on how to do this. And honestly, I just used the existing sheer uh, tie up curtain that I had purchased from Amazon um, about a year and a half ago as my guide. But I mean, it's just a basic curtain, but just did a nice uh, seam hem there, and then that's where the the rod will go through. So I was pretty happy that it turned out nice, but I decided to go ahead and order some ribbon. So that is what I, it's just satin um, ribbon. It's not that quite this shiny, it has plastic on top of it. But I'm going to um, use that as my ties. So I'll have one here and then one on this side and then I'll sew it down and then it'll be able to be tied up. Um, really not wanting to invest too much time and energy into this. <laughs> this is my first foray into uh, curtain panels. Um, it seems simple enough <laughs> until you do it. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking this fabric and um, once I get it hung at some point I'll show you. But it matches our rug in the laundry room also which was rather unintentional but pretty happy about that so this was my little project the other day that i worked on and i'm pretty happy with it okay so i'm gonna sit down and stitch this up real quick it should only really take a few minutes and then this project is done so i have pinned it at the top where the rod is inserted and actually what I'm going to do is go ahead and sew across the very top another seam and my, my rod is very narrow. So I'll leave enough where that can go through, but maybe a half to three fourths of an inch down from the top. That way when it's hung, the top portion will gather a little bit, which I, I like that look. So that I'm gonna sew all the way across a seam and that will tack my ribbon both on the front and the back. And then I am going to stitch the ribbon in place uh, along the seam, the existing seam here at the bottom. So just one seam across the ribbon. So I've got the ribbon all um, pinned front and back. 
So I've got all this and excess, and then I will be able to probably trim it down, but so I've got the ribbon on the front and the back, and it'll be able to be tied up. So hopefully my plan works. Wish me luck. Well, I finished putting up the curtains that I just made. Well, curtain, <laughs> curtain panel. Um, I wound up having to kind of secure the bottom portion with safety pins on either side. I could just probably tack it with a few stitches on either side, or if I want to uh, leave it and just so it can be raised a little bit more than I guess I could just leave it the way it is, but not really thrilled about this, but it's it's up there and I made it. Yep. <laughs> I'll show you the, I'll back up a little bit and show you the rug. So the rug is a very similar um, pattern, geometric pattern there. Um, so it does coordinate, um, not in love with it, but it is up there. So um, yay for a completed project. <laughs> But thanks for watching today, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow with my Weight Watcher weigh-in video. God bless.